All right, Sketch Pad Podcast, we back. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about Jocelyn Hernandez getting into an altercation with the police. And, uh, yeah, let's get into it, man. Let me start this first. Yeah, we have got to a point in society where we believe that this is acceptable behavior to law enforcement, and it's not. I wish people stopped thinking that. Listen, let's be clear here. I ain't the biggest supporter of police officers, but I will say this. They have a hard job because nowadays people are, are uh, deliberately doing things to them now because they've been demonized so much now the back the bad cops of course they should be demonized but as a whole you need law enforcement because a lot of times people especially people who know that you need law enforcement there are bad people out there i wish people stopped believing that it's that it's there are bad people out there that's just the bottom line like there are murderers and killers. There are rapists out there. What what should you do? Should you just let them just be? I mean, what, what you should police you? Either way, you're going to be the authority figure there. So if there's police or you, one of y'all are going to do something to these people. So I think that people like Jocelyn Hernandez who take advantage of the, uh, I would say the failures of police officers in, in, and um, use it to their use it to their um you know just use it to their advantage it's fucked up it's messed up you know what i'm saying they shouldn't use this type of stuff to their advantage because there are people who are really in need of the police and if you doing things like this fighting the police arguing with the police, telling, oh, don't touch me, white man, and all this stuff. It's like, come on. It's it's out of control, and I just think that us as people, we have to come to some type of an agreement with the police officers. Um, I'm going to let you speak, but I got a solution, I believe. I think that what certain police officers should do when it comes to situations like this. What? She's a hothead, man. She's a real hothead. Um, the behavior, I mean, it's not surprising to me, man. She's been like, she's been acting this way since the since the beginning of when she started, you know, her own, you know, reality show. When she was on Love and Hip Hop all this stuff like it's not nothing new i mean she had her moments when she was chill but this is who she is you know um i don't know why everybody's surprised for me i'm surprised that she got away with a lot of that and the cops did not do much of anything i heard him say he was going to tase her i don't think he tased her though i heard him say that but I don't think she was tased. And I'm surprised she got away with a lot. I'm going to just, she got away with a lot. And if that was some dude, you know what I'm saying? Probably would have been laid out. They probably, they probably been like five or six cops pounced on whoever and choked him out or whatever the case may be. If that would even happen, they would have been, it would have been, and then it would have caused this big confusion 
of, uh, oh, did you see this and this and that or whatever. And really, that would have became just a small clip and the whole thing would have been shown of what really happened, you know. Um, but uh, thankfully, it didn't go that far, you know, and it just stuck to what was done. But she got off. She got off very lucky. That's all I got to say. She got off very lucky. And their job is hard. Like, I'm not the biggest supporter of uh, cops neither. I mean, I'm really not. You know, but she got off very, very lucky. You know what I mean? Because if, you know, you never know when you'll run into a hot-headed cop and you testing the boundaries and then one day he just decides to pull the trigger. Y'all got to be careful out there doing stuff like that. You know what I mean? Because they're under a lot of pressure, too. It's not just us that's under pressure. They're under a lot of pressure, too. And you don't want to go do something that you know you ain't supposed to be doing just to force their hand. You know what I mean? Because you these, young, these cops are younger now. There are a lot of younger cops. And those cops don't go by the same morals that a lot of these older cops that have been on the force 20 something years go by. You know what I mean? They go by a different code and you don't want to run into one of these younger cops and then one day, you know what I mean? You, you, you doing the wrong thing. You know, you ain't supposed to be doing it. Then click, click, you know? So I gotta be careful out there, man. That was pretty risky for her. Um, my solution is, uh, I think cops, new cops should be introduced. And this is, this, this really not, that has not, not necessarily has anything to do with Jocelyn Hernandez. First of all, I think cops should be introduced to the neighborhoods that they patrol. They should be introduced to the families and the people in the neighborhood. So for example, if they know they're going to be patrolling uh, a small town in i don't know small town in new jersey they should have a meeting with the small town and meet the children and meet the people in that town i know that I sounds kind of weird but at the same time i think it's a good idea because most police officers they don't know these people mm-hmm. you know they don't know who these people are And at least you can get to know some of the people. Yeah. As far as situations, I think police officers are not well equipped to de-escalate situations. With the Jocelyn Hernandez thing, she was basically acting very erratic. She looked like she sounded like she was drunk. Or something was going on. I think sometimes when you bring police into a situation where they basically can't do anything. Like, for example, we know that, uh, that, uh, she was acting erratic, right? But was she being violent to the point where she was uncontrollable? They got to learn how to deescalate the situation. So with her being, um, acting erratic that and acting crazy or acting belligerent like that. Sometimes police officers ain't the ain't the way to get her to calm down because most of the time when people see law enforcement, they act even more crazy and more belligerent and more ignorant, and that's what she did. So, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have the cops present, but. They, it's hard to explain because when you being taught how to deescalate a situation, it's they teach you these universal codes, but the universal code don't work for everybody because everybody isn't the same. So, like, like for example, working with, I worked with psych patients for years, and they taught us these 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 different methods, and the methods never worked because. People brains don't work that way. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't universally 
of have everybody in the same box and say, well, uh, this is what you got to do to calm this person down and that person and that person and that person and that person down. It's a universal thing. No, it's not. It's not a universal thing. So sometimes people get triggered when they see certain things. She probably got triggered when she seen the police. You know what I'm saying? Maybe she had a flashback or something because she said something about white man. Don't you white man don't touch me. And yeah. society has fed us this mental illness. You know what I'm saying? That's just the bottom line. We all kind of got, we all, we all have some type of trauma with police officers, even if we never was encountered by a police officer because we seen yeah. George Floyd, we seen all these people. So now every cop that we see, we on high alert, even if we were never approached by a cop. Yeah. Because in our head, we're saying, well, it could happen to us. And it's like, no, it probably wouldn't happen to you. Because a good percentage of people who are killed by cops, and I hate to say this, but it's the truth, a good percentage of them were doing something illegal. So for the most part, if a good percentage of them was doing something illegal, that's what happened. Not to say that they deserved it, or not to say that that uh, anything like that, but if Jocelyn would have got something would have happened to her, it goes back to when people do something illegal. So if something had happened to her, what was she doing? Acting belligerent, doing something that she wasn't supposed to be doing. Not to say she was doing something illegal, but she was doing something that goes, that totally goes counterproductive to what police officers are telling you what to do. Yeah. So I believe that in a situation like that. Yeah. Anyway, this episode is over. So, Sketchpad, you know what it is.